This video is covering some details connected with the endocrine system, so the hormonal system, 10 fast facts, details that might come up in an exam question in a roundabout way. This is all part of Leaving Cert Biology based on the Irish post-primary system. The endocrine system is all to do with hormones and the glands that secrete particular hormones and their effect. Hormones are chemical messengers secreted by endocrine glands and they travel in the blood to a target where they have a specific effect. So hormones are chemicals, they're mostly protein based, some are steroid based and they're carried in the blood. So those two facts are really important to remember. So fact number two. Endocrine glands are ductless, meaning that they secrete hormones directly into the blood. The hormones are not secreted into ducts or tubes. In contrast, there are exocrine glands and they secrete whatever they produce into ducts or tubes. So exocrine glands, you've encountered quite a number of them on your course, they secrete whatever they produce into tubes or ducts. For example, the salivary glands in the mouth, the mammary glands in the breast. Then you have sweat glands and they secrete sweat into sweat ducts and they're found all over the skin. Fact number three. This is all to do with the pancreas, which is quite unusual because it has both an endocrine function and an exocrine function. The endocrine function of the pancreas is that it produces the hormone insulin. Insulin is produced by particular cells, the islets of Langerhans, named after the doctor who discovered them. So they produce insulin and it's secreted directly into the blood. The exocrine function of the pancreas is that it produces pancreatic enzymes and they are secreted into this tube known as the pancreatic duct and they travel to the small intestine where they have the effect. Fact number four, still dealing with the pancreas. So insulin is the hormone that's produced by those cells in the pancreas and the role of insulin is to lower blood glucose levels. So insulin unlocks the cells and allows glucose to enter. Very important for cellular respiration. Insulin is protein based and so it must be injected because if it was taken orally, proteases would break it down. Proteases are those enzymes that break down proteins and one of note is pepsin in the stomach, which you encountered in human nutrition. As part of the endocrine system, we focus a lot on the thyroid gland and the hormone that it produces, thyroxine. So thyroxine is secreted by the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland's at the front of the neck and it looks like a butterfly shape or a dicky bow shape. And it produces this hormone, thyroxine. Thyroxine controls metabolic rate. It's a very important hormone. And if you are deficient in it, which you have to be able to discuss, particularly as a child or a baby, it leads to a condition known as cretinism, which is very serious and must be treated. And in in this case, thyroxine is administered to the children, mostly babies, as a medicine. Adults can also become deficient in thyroxine and the symptoms are weight gain, dry skin, hair loss, fatigue, sometimes goiter, which is swelling of the thyroid gland. Often this is caused by a lack of iodine in the diet because iodine is essential for making thyroxine. So you can increase your iodine or just take thyroxine as a medicine. Fact number six, still dealing with thyroxine. So what happens if you produce too much thyroxine? Well, this can be quite serious as well. You can suffer weight loss, anxiety, bulging eyes, high body temperature and a whole host of other symptoms. This is known as Graves disease. You can also suffer from goiter as well if you have too much thyroxine as well as too little. The treatment for Graves disease often can involve surgery, so removing part of the gland or taking radioactive iodine is another way of treating Graves disease. Fact number seven is to do with the hypothalamus. It's very important that we know its location. It's located in the brain just above the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus plays a key role in homeostasis, so maintaining constant internal conditions. The hypothalamus plays a key role in thermoregulation, so maintaining body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius or thereabouts. So it's responsible for detecting changes in body temperature and initiating a response to this. For example, if there's a drop in body temperature, the hypothalamus will stimulate the pituitary gland to produce thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone will travel from the pituitary gland to the thyroid gland at the front of the neck and stimulate the production of more thyroxine. Thyroxine, you know, regulates metabolic rate. And so if you produce more thyroxine, you increase metabolic rate and this generates more heat. And so body temperature rises. With the return of normal body temperatures, the hypothalamus is inhibited. And so this response ends. Fact number eight. Hormones only interact with specific target cells and the reason for this is that the target cells will have specific receptors on their surface, these molecules on their surface, and only those hormones, those chemical messengers that combined with the specific receptor cell can cause a response, a bit like a jigsaw. It has to fit perfectly to give the reaction. 
Fact number nine. We're back again with the hypothalamus and it produces this hormone, antidiuretic hormone, ADH, produced by the hypothalamus but secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And it travels in the blood to the kidneys, particularly to the distal convoluted tubules of the nephrons in the kidneys, making them more permeable to water. So ADH makes more water be reabsorbed into the blood. And when ADH is secreted, a lower volume of urine is produced. Fact number 10. The hypothalamus is said to have an important role in that it links the nervous system and the endocrine system. So it links these two systems together. The hypothalamus receives information from nerves and then this regulates the secretion of particular hormones from the pituitary gland. So when the hypothalamus receives information, it will produce hormones that travel to the pituitary gland and cause the production of other hormones or the secretion of other hormones. So the hypothalamus in many ways regulates the pituitary gland in addition to producing oxytocin and ADH. So that concludes our 10 facts in the endocrine system. There are lots of other videos out there. You have a science textbook and you have your teacher's notes. Please revise the whole topic. Best of luck.